Power on. Hey guys, welcome to another Patreon special missions request. And this one is courtesy of Michael Choi, who just last weekend sent the gift box that I did the unboxing for. And today we're taking a look at the 1987 Captain Power figure from Mattel. So much like the Rambo figure that I just recently reviewed. Uh, these don't stand on their own, so I've just jerry-rigged, I've MacGyvered this little thing here to keep this thing standing. And 1987 was a very busy year for new toy lines in the Army Ants history video that just went up on the channel recently. Talked about a lot of the other lines that came out, uh, Visionaries, Battle Beasts, and Mattel decided to try something new with this new line called Captain Power. So for those who aren't familiar with Captain Power, even though it's not one of the most remembered 80s uh, toy lines and TV shows, it is actually one of the most revolutionary. These toys uh, were designed to interact with the TV show. So there were characters on the TV show that would have flickering chests, flashing guns, and they could shoot certain vehicles that you had from the toy line and you could shoot back too. So the two would interact with each other and it was really uh, way, way ahead of its time. And also there were characters on the show too that were completely CGI, uh, robotic characters. So I always remembered it just being something that was really imaginative, a trailblazer for things to come. Uh, basically an interactive video game years before that type of stuff was coming out um, regularly on home systems and the Captain Power figure was available a couple of different ways he was single carded and he was also available as part of this thing right here the Captain Power Power On Energizer and I've also seen pictures of the power jet that both came without a figure and with Captain Power. So very similar to He-Man and the Masters of the Universe who were hanging out back here. Um, in G.I. Joe, basically, they would, they would hardly ever do that. If a figure was single carded, he was single carded. And if a figure came with a vehicle, that was the only way to get that figure. You didn't have a second chance at it. Whereas with Masters of the Universe, you could get, isn't that strange? box the back of the box is upside down um, but you could get he-man single carded you could get he-man double packed with battle cat you could get him in a three pack you could get him with uh, a vehicle or a, another steed so uh, same mentality was applied to captain power and this was a trademark of 80s toys as well very similar to G.I. Joe file cards, you get the full name, which is Captain Jonathan Power. You get his rank, his military background, characteristics, weakness, special feature, military insignia. So things to round out the character a little bit. And then this reminds me of the Inhumanoids Earth Core figures, where you have these little details of what he actually has on his suit. Got the power suit, headgear communicator, magno grips chest energy shield power blaster and then down here we get some pictures of some of the other toys available there's the energizer and the power jet and then over on the bad guy side the phantom striker the interlocker and then here they sh they talk about how you can actually shoot things on the screen light rays are for illustration only so it didn't actually have visible beams it was uh, invisible beams that you could fire at, at targets on the TV and they fire back so something on the TV could actually hit your power jet and cause your pilot to have to eject and some more details on the back of the Energizer um, once again interacting with the TV and there you see the uh, jet ejecting its pilot there so it's not just a defensive thing, it's an offensive thing. Really imaginative. And I know Thundercats 
tried their hand at the laser thing too with uh, Cat's Lair and a couple of the other smaller accessories. Brave Star also uh, was all about the laser firing gimmick, laser tag. And I really like how on the front of the box you can see the figure in a window complete with red background too. So that is very similar to the way G.I. Joe vehicles were packed and they had their figure visible in the window. Visionaries as well. So I always liked being able to actually see the figure inside instead of just a picture of the figure which is how they did it on some of the G.I. Joe vehicles. Alright let's take a look at the Captain Power figure himself out of package. And here is Captain Power himself and it's all about the chrome Love that shiny, gleaming chrome. So this particular figure is from the Power On Energizer set. So he was uh, unused, untouched when I opened him up. And the great thing about Captain Power toys is they're still very, very affordable. So if you want to be able to have that feeling again of opening up, not just a um, reissue, or an homage modern toy. If you want to open up the, the genuine article, an original Captain Power figure, you can still do that for a very affordable price. The figures today aren't actually that much more than they were back when they were originally released. Uh, same goes for the vehicles too. The Energizer with box never opened was actually very, very affordable. So if you want the experience of being able to open up a vintage Captain Power box and not for lots and lots and lots of money and be able to go through all of the original contents. Captain Power is one of the uh, few lines that that's actually uh, doable. So here's a few of the things that were included with the Energizer box. This to me looks like a Brave Star accessory. I've seen some of these, never had the Brave Star stuff growing up, but in the Brave Star stuff that I've collected in the last few years, um, this folds up and you can put this foil um, on. You stick it on there and it's like a target that you can shoot with the jet or even with this thing. Uh, so these are used stickers for the Energizer which I drop right there. And this is another sticker that I've also applied around the middle there. And you get this really nice card. It's like a giant sized data card, info card on the Energizer. And it gives you a bunch of info on it, force field generator, power beam magnifier. So on the show, Captain Power used to go into this thing and uh, charge up how he recharged. Energy platform. Destroy if captured. I like these little things right here to make them seem very top secret. And then over on the back there's some more information about what the Energizer is. System engineering. Look at all this information. That's awesome. It's so cool to be able to open up a toy and not just have it be a toy you play with but have a bunch of literature that you can continue reading up on and fill out the story. It also came with this battle guide rules booklet, how to play against your TV. So there's a nice table of contents there and information here, steps that you need to do, how to, um, all the distance you need to be from your TV, types of TVs used. I don't think these work on the newer TVs, new LEDs and plasmas and flat screen TVs. I think you'd need an old style boob tube for this to, to work anymore. And this whole thing is actually very detailed. It opens right up and tons of steps here. Very involved process. Man, possibly even very overwhelming for a little kid who just wants to shoot at his TV. And then 
instructions for the Energizer. Um, similar to Transformers instruction books or He-Man. Just to make sure you got all the pieces. Figure, his pistol. And then a little diagram of how to assemble it and instructions on how to insert the batteries. So we'll get to the Energizer in a second, but just taking a quick look at Captain Power, he did come with a gun, and these are the most fragile vintage guns, vintage accessories of any toy line that I've ever seen. Uh, some of these have just crumbled, uh, have been crumbled in the package I've seen, and quite a few of them just from popping them in the figure's hand have broken. If you're familiar with gold plastic syndrome, that's what all of these accessories seem to suffer from, whether they're gold or not. They're just an incredibly brittle plastic, and uh, I'm hesitant to even put this in here, to try to put this in here, but what can I say? I like to live life on the edge. Luckily, that hole is actually... Um, it's not that tight, so that gun fits in there nice. It's not... It's not snug, no real danger of it breaking, but you're gonna see that a lot on Captain Power figures. In terms of articulation, he's kind of like a G.I. Joe. Not quite there, but um, it's got the same type of shoulder uh, movement, and he can do a full 360 as long as you move his arm a certain way. If you go like this, he kind of gets in his own way, but if you come out all the way, gives him a little bit more range. He has uh, an elbow bend, which I don't dare try to push all the way because once again, like his hands seem to be made of that same gold plastic syndrome style of material. So the less you futz with these guys, the better. His head moves left and right and it's uh, the helmet is sculpted on. It was not a removable helmet. And for the feet, his legs again are similar to G.I. Joe's legs, being able to go out and up. Can he do the splits? Sort of, almost. It's almost there. And knee bend too, which when you start to feel resistance, stop because you uh, you don't want to push it. And that's about it. So in, in terms of posability, um, articulation, there's really not much there. It's a little bit better than a He-Man figure, but the chrome is what's really the nicest part about these figures. It makes them much nicer display pieces than actual play with pieces. Just such nice, shiny, glimmery chrome on them. Very similar to a Silver Hawk. And to give you an idea of what kind of size he is, he is actually exactly G.I. Joe scaled, or maybe just a teeny tiny bit bigger. They're about the same height if a Joe is on a stand. So we've got another science fiction looking Joe in here with him, sci-fi. And then compared with a Masters of the Universe figure, just like a G.I. Joe, He-Man towers over Captain Power. And next up is the Power On Energizer. So the Captain Power figure has a hole in his back. I just checked my other Captain Power figures and he's the only one with a hole that is the right size for the Energizer right here. So none of the other Captain Power figures, at least the ones that I have, um, as far as I know the only one I don't have is the uh, Stingray, Stingray Johnson. So I don't know about him, but uh, the other standard Captain Power figures are not compatible with the Power On Energizer. That's too bad. It would have been cool if they could all go in here and and get powered up. Maybe you could even get a line of these and display um, each of your figures on here. Because aside from being the Energizer that's supposed to interact with the TV. It's actually a really cool display stand for a Captain Power figure. So on the back, there is this 
handle, which you can actually pop in like this, and then you can push it up, but this one's rather tight and I, I don't want to really force it and just plugging it in like that is pretty sturdy too. So if you wanted to use it kind of like a gun, I guess, you can walk around and carry it by the, the handle instead of like this. Um, it's, it's a nice little extra, I suppose, but uh, it's, it's not really something that, uh, that I need. Uh, so the big thing, other than being a nice display stand, this thing is actually electronic. So down here is a battery compartment and it's nice when a rib ribbon is included, which you just give it a tug and the batteries can be very easily pulled out. And inside there's a diagram of how all the batteries have to go. So the ones on the back go like so. Put in our Toys R Us Canada batteries. And one going the other way in the bottom. Now this thing is a beast. It takes four AA batteries. And I would think something that does the same job today would probably only need one AAA battery. And two more going the other way. But uh, the Captain Power Toys must have really eaten through the batteries like crazy. And one more like so. You don't need to put the cover back on, but if you want it to look nice and tidy, you can just slide that back on. Make sure the ribbon is tucked in there, not getting pinched. And once you have all that closed up, you can flip the on switch, which is right here. And when you do, you get a cool classic 80s computer beep sound. Let's try that again. That's awesome. So that's a cool little signifier just to let you know that you've put the batteries in the right way. Now that it's on, it's got a button on the back here, which is what I guess shoots out that signal that we saw in the pamphlet. And I gotta warn you, this is gonna be a really cool light that flashes in behind and it actually lights up Captain Power's chest emblem but it is one of the most annoying sounds you've ever heard. Here we go. And uh, it doesn't seem to stop. <laughs> you gotta flip the switch in order to shut it off. So I guess once you turn it on, it's actually gonna go for quite some time. So luckily that doesn't go indefinitely. It's nice that it eventually does stop. And it's actually nice that it has two different incredibly annoying sounds too. It goes from the first one to the second one. A little bit of variance. Would have been nice if there were even more um, different beeps and boops, but we're talking 87 here. And it's really, really loud in person. Like if you're in a room with this thing going, and uh, someone's trying to talk to you, you might actually have some trouble hearing them because it is loud and piercing. And it's really bright too. So I'm gonna turn off the lights here just to show you just how bright this thing actually lights up Captain Power. So that's Captain Power and his Power On Energizer. If you've got a Captain Power memory about either the show or the toy line that you'd like to share, scroll down and go to town. Thanks to the Patreon tribe for your continued support. Looking forward to upcoming roundtables as well as the next cartoon commentary for G.I. Joe Resolute. Feel free to share the video with other Captain Power fans and to join the tribe, Power On Subscribe. Nerd mistake.